We are tossing out this old school radio tech in favor for an off-grid version of Waze that we want to build so you can communicate with other vehicles while off-roading, track everybody on the trip, and requires zero self-coverage. Communicating while off-roading with your group can be a pain in the butt. It requires the right radio, the right antenna, you have to coordinate the frequencies with the group, and you feel like you've been transported back into 1946 because the technology is so low-tech. Today, we are going to start to build and test a solution for off-roading with groups that will allow you to track each vehicle, have messaging between all the vehicles so everyone stays safe, and put it in the palm of your hands, all controlled through an app. Yeah! It will also be long distance capable and use a mesh network to reach everybody in the group. Now, let's say you're with a group of vehicles in the mountains and the guy in back wants to communicate with the guy in front. With typical radio range, with hills and valleys between vehicles, it often doesn't reach. But with this mesh, Solution, each vehicle with a radio will automatically relay that message forward, extending the range that any one radio and one truck can reach. This technology does not allow for voice, but we can pass GPS location, speed, vehicle info, and text messages. This is all made possible with this radio and with this app. Now, this radio has a built-in GPS module and antenna to keep track of location. It has a antenna for the main radio to participate in the mesh network. It also has a battery power source that can run for up to three days and a screen to show status. And finally, it has a Bluetooth radio that is actually used to connect to your phone and make the app work. The app is also pretty simple. It's used to connect to that radio so that it can display all the location information and messaging that will happen inside of the app. Now, we're gonna find a way to mount every one of these radios with the in, in the truck, but with the antenna on the outside. Battery backup should make it nice and simple to be able to run these. And then we're gonna do some testing. Now, we're gonna start by testing an open source project already out there called Meshtastic. It's used for hiking, biking, skiing, and even planes. But it's not a turnkey solution that's real easy to just buy off the shelf or download off the internet and get working. So we're gonna be diving into the code, configuring this for our use case, and then going out and testing it to see if it meets the need that we have. So let's break down the testing that needs to get done. We first need to test the line of sight or the max range that these radios have in a flat open terrain. Then we will need to test the usable range in mountain terrain, which might be more common for off-roading. And we will also test the max number of nodes or vehicles that this mesh technology can support. And finally, we will go on a Raptor run in Moab, Utah to do some field testing and see how it actually performs in the real world. All right, so our first test, we're gonna head out into the desert where it's nice and flat to start our first range testing. I first started by attaching a radio to a stake in the ground as one of our starting points. Then I went ahead and attached my radio to my truck here at the window, and I started driving. So these radios are designed to message every 15 seconds. So I just started driving and watched the messages come into the app as it was reporting its location. And as soon as it stopped reporting its location, I was out of range because I didn't see the update inside of the app. Now, my goal with these radios was to hit 10 miles point to point. And after I pulled up Google Maps to double check the point-to-point -point location on the earth between the two nodes, I found that I reached 11.4 miles, which was great. But I believe it could go further because I was at the top of a hill and I lost communication as I went down the hill. So they might be able to go a little bit further. What this means is that with a big group and over 10 miles of range between each radio, you can have six or eight people and communicate almost over 60 to 80 miles apart, all with everybody being able to message and see everyone else's location, which is pretty good range. Next was time to test how many nodes can I actually have in this 11 or 10 mile area. 
Now with a mesh network, the more nodes that you have on the network, or the more vehicles that we have communicating, the more congested everything is. Meaning, if it gets too congested, nobody can actually talk. So there is a limit to how many vehicles you can have. And we're gonna try to find what that limit is. So I started setting up radios on stakes, one at a time, then another, then another, and I used up all the radios I had. I had seven radios to test in this 10 mile area, and they performed great. I had no more to test. I didn't have any more radios, I wish I did. So at least for now, we knew seven could operate in this 10 mile or 11 mile area without any issues. Okay, so now we're gonna do some testing up in some canyons to get an idea to see how these things perform uh, in hilly and canyon areas. 0.8 miles for our first node. Let me show you these roads that we're on real quick. That road comes over this way and then out that way. And then as we look up, it goes straight on and then veers that way. So these are not in any way, straight roads that we're on. These are definitely windy canyon roads. So there's no line of sight necessarily. This is all the technology getting us the range we need. Okay, for the last one, I'm gonna go ahead and put it uh, next to these trees, kind of to simulate a more dense area if you're riding in trails in a in a pack uh, as opposed to this paved road that I'm actually on should diminish the range we'll see what happens and uh, as a reminder distance wise we are just about 0.9 miles from the previous node so we're getting on average between 0.7 and 0.9 miles between points in the canyons with all the forests let's see how this one does we're at one, 1.3 miles currently right now. And uh, I'm getting some instability in, in that not all the nodes are reporting, but they report about, uh, about half the time to 75% of the time, which is kind of incredible. Because if you think about it, a mile and a half between nodes, I saw some of the first nodes skipping over the, skipping over the node next to it and actually reporting to the next node. And so we're seeing um, even at 0.7 miles of range is actually a little bit further. And then I also noticed that if you're driving, you don't get quite as much range as if you're standing still. So there is some there, but that's pretty good. If I can get between a half a mile and a mile um, inside of these canyon areas, then I think that's really good communication with a group. I think you're not gonna be spread out further than this. I think this is gonna even work in these canyon situations. Okay, one more thing to point out here in this canyon. Uh, right in front of me here is actually uh, this big guy here is a cell tower. So they recently installed cell towers in this canyon so people recreationing can have communication. And I did some measurement and most of these cell towers in this canyon are spaced between 0.2 and 0.4 miles uh, between each tower. And we're getting 0.7 to one and a half miles of range with Mestastic, which is just incredible because you can see that the technology is able to really reach some crazy good and far distances. Uh, interesting enough, some of the, the frequencies these towers are using are some of the same frequencies Meshtastic is using and we're using for these comms. So clearly by keeping the messages small and the information's really small with this, this solution that we've got, we can reach way farther distances than you even could with cell. So I think we've really got a combination here. We just gotta figure out all the details. I'm really pleased and excited about the results that we're seeing. Um, these guys are mounted, if you can see. And these are mounted almost at three and a half, maybe four feet to up versus the cell towers that are mounted at over, over 30 to 40 feet. And we're still getting that range out of them. Man, this is so exciting. Did you know that hitting that like button can increase the range of these radios by 20%? No, not really. But if you do hit that like button, it'll increase the range of people that might see it. So light it up. Now, for our final test, we're gonna go to Moab for a Raptor event. Now this software and hardware combo is still very early and has its bugs. 
So we were the only ones that would have an app actually monitoring and looking at the network to see how all the radios were communicating. But let's cut to that setup and what it looked like. We have uh, all of our nodes here. We actually have 10 nodes, uh, nine of them that are gonna go on trucks. And then this 10th node over here is actually the one that we connect to our tablets uh, where we're monitoring what's going on on the trail to make sure all the radios are staying connected. They're reporting GPS location. Um, and great thing about, uh, about these, we actually ended up uh, working, made up some cases. Uh, we'll link to the, in the description of the company or the, the guy that built these. Uh, so there weren't our design, we printed them. Uh, so we built up the cases. We actually got some high gain GPS antennas just to make sure there's no issues with getting a GPS lock. Um, and then we mounted them to uh, a window mount, uh, window antenna mount here, pretty slick little device. Um, and so the whole unit is mounted directly to the antenna mount and then the antenna mount just goes right on your window on each truck. Really simple setup. Uh, has been working pretty well for us. And then over here for the one that we're doing the monitoring on, uh, we don't have a case for him but it doesn't matter because it's our development one. Um, but this guy, uh, we have a higher gain antenna. This is a huge monster. They call it the Super Bat. Uh, it's actually a 9 dvi gain antenna to get us as much range as we can since we're we're the ones monitoring the network uh, during development and then there's both an android and iphone app that we've been using to monitor each node that comes in and check its getting gps location where the truck's at and um, we actually had a situation yesterday where uh, some of the trucks, it took quite a while for them to get back. So we were, uh, the first half of the group was stopped and trying to figure out, hey, where's everybody at? Um, unfortunately, we were having issues, which is the purpose of development, working through it. But in that scenario, it would have been great to be able to look at it, open up the app and look and say, hey, are they still okay? Did they make a wrong turn? Uh, they ended up coming back um, and we're gonna get some of the bugs fi figured out today so that hopefully to today, if that happens, um, we won't get anybody, we'll know where everybody's at. Um, but great scenario to talk through on why a situation like this or a setup like this would be great uh, with an off-road group to keep everybody safe and make sure we know where everybody is and that everybody can communicate. All right, so we're gonna hit the road today. We'll see you guys in a bit. Truck three, reset mileage. Uh, lead truck 2.5, a pickup truck heading opposite direction. Truck eight, rolling out. Non-coming is 6-1. 7.1, campsite, people around, slow down, don't dust them out. This is one of the most fun projects I've had to be able to go out into the desert with a bunch of buddies and their raptors while we're testing this software and this app to see if it's gonna work. All right, so overall results from our testing is it's not perfect, but it worked. I mean, our initial testing was really great in the canyons and in the desert. So we started to run into a couple issues when we actually got down to using it in real life. So we had a balancing act between range and the number of vehicles we could track inside of the app. Now, we had 10 radios, which was more than our previous testing. And so if we increase the range of each radio, we couldn't have as many vehicles on the network because it would congest everything. So we would make the range a little bit smaller with different settings, which would allow us to have more trucks on the network, but then we'd have range issues. So we were always battling reliability versus range. So overall, we definitely learned that this Meshtastic solution still has some software bugs, and there were a ton of configurations that we had to play with to get it to run just right. But when it worked, it worked. There were multiple times on this trip where we had eight or nine of the 10 vehicles all communicating and reporting for hours. GPS location, messaging, all of that was up and running. We still have some more work to do and some more ground to cover, but we're headed in the right direction to make this work. So our goal here is to find all the right radios and antennas and cases and software settings and then provide that to you in a painless way so you can just buy the radios, download the app, and get to using it without any problems. So make sure and stay tuned as our testing continues because this is only the beginning of the journey for our TrailNet off-grid communication solution.
Hey guys, we're gonna keep this video content rolling, but why wait for the next video? Check out the link here for another video that you can watch to get inspiration on your next upgrade.